the Asian trip of a Parisian woman. Passing several embankments, the train rushes along the flat step. Madame Ofalvi Pourdan compared it to the green cloth of a billiard table. And it's not an ivory ball that rolls on a flat surface, but an express train of the great Trans-Asian Railway, Jules Verne, Claudius Bombana. Amiens, Jules Verne Museum. He lived here for over 30 years. He worked here and he made his fantastic predictions. A computer image, a flight to the moon, Turk Sib, the same Trans-Asian Railway. Jules Verne said it's very easy to explain why all predictions came true. When I talk about a scientific discovery, I first investigate all the sources available to me and draw conclusions and rely on a lot of facts. So the idea of the highway down which journalist Claudos Bambanek traveled was inspired by the travel notes of Madame Ofalvi Bourdon. Uh, in the books, it's a real, uh, a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a fantasy. Mm -hmm. well, not fantasy, not all fantasy. French notes were accepted with delight. Newspapers wrote a lot about them at the end of the 19th century. But in Kazakhstan, there's still only a mention of this journey. Her book has never been completely translated. The story of how the heroine of her own novels, writer Marie Ofalfi Bourdon, became the character of the novel by Jules Verne. For the first time, the trip of a Parisian woman. Jules Verne was impressed with these stories and used her notes. Her information is local in nature. It's tied to specific people, to specific events, to peculiarities of life. She naturally goes deep into the household, psychological motives, the description of her own emotional experiences. Chapter 1, A Female Look. Travel, ladies, travel. Madame Ofalfi urged her readers, do bold things, enjoy your life. Madame Ofalfi, at that time, she was just over 30 years old, and she was a writer, a very popular one in France, and she repeatedly accompanied her husband, Charles Eugène, on scientific expeditions, and wrote a book about this, and was quoted by Jules Verne himself. Jules Verne even made Madame Ulfalfi as a prototype for the character in his book. Marie's husband is an ethnographer, anthropologist, orientalist and linguist. He was interested in Fino or Greek and Altai languages, and not by chance. Charles Eugene was a Hungarian, and he believed that his origin led from Kipchaks, this admiration for the land was increasingly associated with the Turkic origin of Eugene Ulfalfi. In essence, this was the first official French mission specifically focused on the Turkestan region, and it had a very tight schedule, no more than four days for each city, unless, of course, there was a force majeure. The journey dates back to 1877, when the couple from France were able to get an opportunity to study Kazakhstan from the point of view of its topography, geography and specifics in the whole way of life of the Kazakhs at that time. In January, the couple left Moscow for Orenburg, this part of the journey they took by rail. As Marie writes, it seemed to have been built for us, and it started its operation only five days ago. And then on a sleigh, the expedition set off to conquer the immense steppe. On the way, they got into a blizzard. They got lost and they were desperate, but they were saved by the shepherds. And then they bought a dog of the local breed called Tazi. An excellent animal with short fur, soft ears and long legs, extremely slim, which absolutely delighted my husband. It was inconvenient to keep him in a sleigh with us, but the dog warmed us. We called it Buran, in memory of those hurricanes which devastated the steppes. 
Marie Ophalvie Bourdon. By the end of the trip, the couple already had three dogs. Another two they had bought in Samarkand. They admired the snow-covered Aral Sea, which Marie compared with a huge ice pancake and examined the ruins of Sham Kent. It was a huge territory to see all of it, given the difficulty of traveling around during that time. Not far from Kazalinsk, the hospitable locals invited them to visit in a yurt. This kind of gazebo perfectly retains heat, even in fierce cold. Madame Ufalfi was surprised by many things. For example, in Kozladar, I could not take my eyes away from a surprisingly beautiful donkey. It's called a Kulan, wrote Marie. And again, they went hiking. The next point in the map was Turkestan region. Chapter two, masterpieces of Turkestan. Our poor eyes, which have not seen anything like this for a long time, have widened from this grand spectacle. The mosque, even in Paris, would occupy the place of honor. Its architect was a man with great taste. No, I will say more. He was a genius. Marie Ufalfi Bourdon. The tomb of Koja Ahmed Yazawi, which was made such an indelible impression on the spouses, was seen by Ufalfi in March 1877. Because of the Sir Doria spill, the French, instead of spending four days as it was planned in Turkestan, stayed there for eight days, but they were not disappointed by this fact at all. They described this region with great trepidation and in great detail. In the middle of the big hall, there was a huge cauldron. In front of this culinary apparatus, two large artistically made bronze candlesticks covered with enamel, which emphasizes their beauty. In the lower part of the hall, there was a carved wooden door, a real masterpiece, Marie Ouifalvi Bourdon. Charles Eugene even conducted a small excavation near the mosque. He received permission for archaeological research. Mr. Ulfavi had a dream to find traces of Alexander the Great and the ancient Greeks in the Turkestan region. Greek. The Greek influence of Alexander the Great can still be seen in Central Asia and Kazakhstan. We know that artifacts, for example, which archaeologists excavated, they are also directly related to this Hellenistic time. But all Falvi didn't have any luck. However, his method of excavation was far from perfect. He just dug one trench. They found fragments of painted ceramics, pieces of wood, several bones of people and animals, and one whole vase, 70 centimeters high. Most likely it was a hum. Hum is a large vessel for storing, as a rule, bulk or liquid materials. In the last days spent in Turkestan, a small funny incident happened. The owner of the house who invited the spouses for tea decided to decorate his harem with a new item. I found out that he wanted to buy me and he was trying to negotiate with my husband, Mr. Ulfalvi, asked him with a grim how much money he could offer. Our buyer named the price, which he considered to be huge, and was very surprised when my husband answered him with the greatest seriousness, this is too little. Marie Ulfalvi Bourdon. The deal did not take place and a couple went to Shim Kent. Marie describes it as a pretty city surrounded by trees with bright bazaars. Then Tashkent, Samarkand, Kolkand. Then they wanted to go on a trip to the Pamirs, but the political difficulties forced them to abandon this venture. The route had to be changed, and in September 1877, Wolf and his wife were already in Samiritia. Chapter three. Home for lovely apples. 
As I approached Fernie, I watched a woman who was throwing sunflowers on the roof to dry them. I wondered why. But my amazement became even greater when I saw the children, and even our accompanying officer was happy to eat the seeds of this flower. Curiosity made me follow their example, and I enjoyed nibbling this Asian almond, Marie ou Falvi Bourdon. Of course, you can't call her book scientific work. It's just a traveler's notes, as they said then, a genre of travel literature. But in her notes, there were a lot of domestic details, the details of a man would unlikely notice. And if he would notice, it is unlikely that he would have written about it. This everyday household aspect is always interesting, and especially when it concerns the lives of people of that time, about which we know very little. Home for beautiful apples. That's how Marie called the city of Verney, more likely a village. Parisian women did not expect to see here charming examples of architectural creativity. She especially admired the bishop's house, which she called none other than the Palace of Versailles. Quote, the French style bursts out of the windows that seem to overlook Saint-Michel Boulevard. No, but on May the 28th, 1887, a terrible earthquake destroyed this bishop's house. They examined the archaeological collections that were kept by the governor, the Tamalgali rock art, and having traveled around the neighborhood, were amazed at the huge number of Scythian burial mounds. In Burundi, we now see 18-meter mounds. Beshtayar Koganz are almost 20 meters high with a huge amount of stones. And there are a huge amount of such burials on the territory of Almaty region. And then a kaleidoscope of cities, villages, ayuls, only from Kazakhstan, Popal, Ayagos, Semipalatinsk, Akmalinsk, Petropavlovsk. In the latter, Maria admired the mosque floating in the air and was upset by the inescapable dirt of the main street. We have found in the old Gazette, in the old newspapers of our region, that a horseman with a horse drowned in the mud of Woznesensky Avenue. There is a curious fact. From this, as Ulfalfi himself writes, the expedition returned from a long and painful journey to France at the end of 1877. But the idea to better know these lands did not leave the couple. And in 1879, Charles Eugene Ulfalfi, also accompanied by his young wife again, went to the Kazakh steppes, South Siberia and Bukharia. It was the third trip to the territories of modern Kazakhstan, also almost a year, but the goal of the French explorer was India. Epilogue, travel ladies. This colorful meeting was successful, presented at the Paris exhibition of 1878, Charles Eugene Ulfalfi. The colorful collection includes clothes, jewelry, weapons, fragments of monuments, including bricks from the Khodja Ahmed Yasawi Mosque. Most of the artifacts are in museums in Paris, but some remained in the personal collection of the researcher and now, alas, have been lost. They were able to collect quite interesting material, which unfortunately is little known, especially photographic material. During the expedition, the couple collected a significant archaeological collection. Ufalvi conducted anthropological research and wrote six volumes illustrated with photographs. They were referenced, others argued with them, but oddly enough, Jules Verne quoted not his works, but his wife's enthusiastic travel notes. I hope my readers will understand what satisfaction, despite the difficulties, I followed my husband. However, everyone would have done so in my place. A duty accepted without hesitation becomes a pleasure. Humor helps to overcome obstacles, and nothing compares with the happiness that is given to us at the end. Travel, ladies, travel. Marie ou Falfi Bourdon.